Mm. The holiday season is the perfect time to show off your shutterbug skills, so we've invited D. Paul Brown, a freelance photographer, here today to give us some helpful tips for shooting holiday-centric digital photos. Happy holidays, D. Paul. And same to you. And uh, before we go into anything, D. Paul. D. Paul. Your, your name is Paul. Eh, D. Paul. How'd you get the D? Oh, long story. Oh, I thought and we were going to find out. <laughs> we could. It would take the entire segment, though. Oh, darn. Well, we're here to talk maybe about digital segment. cameras. All right. Digital cameras. And what is the number one thing we've got to keep in mind this holiday season? You know, the thing about digital cameras is you have to do a little pre-thought with that. You have to uh, make sure you have uh, charged batteries. Your uh, memory card is clean. Um, let's think... Um, what else do we, should we do on that? Well, just like you know, your just settings. Kind of, your yeah. kind of pre-settings, exactly. The white balance is an important thing. Whatever settings uh, that are in the camera that allows you to do like a red, red eye reduction, all those different things, try to do that the night before or before you actually go into the party. Yeah, fair enough. Because during the party, you're not going to have time to do it. Oh, definitely not. Okay, number two, what do you got to keep in mind? It's dealing with the flash. You know, flash is really important because a lot of the consumer cameras, the built-in flash is generally off on the left-hand side, and it kind of can give you a flash halo. But... You know, if you stand about five to eight um, feet apart or from your subject, it actually will work out rather well. This, this did not. This did not, and you can tell. Um, the person is way too close in the foreground, so she's really blown out. But the people in the background is a little bit better. It's Powder's mom. <laughs> Remember the movie, you know, with the guy who played young Indiana Jones? Powder, the really white guy, like albino, like yeah. times ten. But you don't want to do that. No. Don't want to freak people out with no. the flash. Okay, now what about your surroundings? What, what do you have to keep in mind when you're framing the photo? Things well, to watch out for. Well, you know, it's good to keep, a, keep an eye on the surroundings because if, you're, uh, if the background doesn't look good, it's not going to look good in your uh, picture either. So it's good to kind of keep an eye out on, you know, your surroundings and also not to be too close to anything real reflective like mirrors, windows. You know, make sure you're not backlit or anything like that. Do we have a picture uh, illustrating what we got to watch out for, like in terms of perspective or bouncing light so that it um, sucks There's a away? couple here. There's this one right here. It kind of, um, it's a great shot of that package at the front, but, you know, the background, it's all kind of a mess. Yeah. No one really sees anything. Um, but that package looks really nice. Oh, definitely. Um, now, one of the other things to keep in mind for um, your flash is that when you're standing about five feet away, you can zoom in a little bit so the flash doesn't overpower your uh, snapshot, oh, yeah. but you're still getting a good exposure. And, you know, these are all party snapshots. These aren't, you know, your fine art stuff, but this is all to keep the memory in your head of, a, of that event. Yeah. You've got a little red eye in this photo. A little bit. There's actually um, a good shot right here of um, red eye, which, unfortunately, <laughs> it's a cute shot. Um, red eye is just really a bad thing to have happen. And the, the only tricks you can kind of do... Um, without doing it in editing, is actually have the person be kind of a little bit of a profile, like a three-quarter profile. Um, a lot of cameras have red-eye reduction now, mm -hmm. so you can use that. Um, it's not perfect, but um, it'll reduce it a little bit. Um, and also, after the fact, do get into a, one of the editing uh, softwares that you can get and yeah. uh, just take that red eye. Right and red eye usually happens because, uh, is it the iris is, is used to a darker light and then a big light happens and then it reflects? Exactly. And if you can get a nicer flash, if, um, if your camera will allow a, an external flash, um, some of those little beams of light they shoot out before the main flash happens will sometimes take down the, the red eye. Okay. Fair enough. And then, of course, you know, it's somewhat related to all this. You've got to take a look at what you're going to shoot before you shoot it. Of course. Of course. Because if, you know, if your subject matter or the background doesn't look good, you're not going to get a great shot. All right. It. So it's something to keep in mind, that's for sure. Don't want to, I mean, what kind of artistic things can you do? I mean, you know, just kind of change it up. Because everything you see is usually in the center. Of course. And you don't always want to um, put the person right in the center. You know, this is a good snapshot of... Uh, um, from Thanksgiving, um, you know, where it's just like a real quick, candid shot. But, you know, it's just thinking about it, you know, before uh, you shoot. And also, if you don't like the, the shot that you have, you can always go in and crop it differently. You can actually, you know, take out some extraneous things that just don't look good. Like you could actually crop out the stove and all like that and just focus in on the people if you want to do that. What if you're trying to take pictures of someone who's taller or shorter than you? Oh, tough one, um, especially kids. You want to kind of get down on the kids' level or actually bring the child up to the adult's level um, because, you know, shooting down onto people does, isn't really a, a, a flattering uh, angle on them. All right. Generally. Or shooting up either. Last <laughs> Most tip people don't like that. I've got here, click away. What click away. Mean? The great thing about digital is that it's unlimited. Just keep shooting because it's a, getting a good image is an average you know, so if you're shooting 50, 60 photos, you're going to get two or three really nice photos. So just keep shooting, and, you know, it's digital. 
Yeah, you're you not, can always... You're not having to process, you can delete, yep. you can do all that fun stuff. A lot of people forget that, too. Yeah, you can delete right then, right? You know, oh, I didn't like that, let's try it again. Yeah. It's See, the perfect thing to do. I had my first digital, or no, my first camera was like a Polaroid. Oh, yeah. So you I had like Polaroid. a limited, yeah, you know, the, the instant, you know, one cam. That exactly. Think, you only, I only had like 30 of them, so you had to be careful about... Exactly. The picture. And, and even with print film, you actually had to go through processing before you got to see the image. Blah. Digital, you can see it right off the bat. Fair enough. Well, I Love think it. I'm ready. I you, think so. You can never have enough digital photo tips, and I'm, t I'm telling you, D. Paul, I'd like to thank you once again because you're just like digital Paul. That's the digital Paul. Hey, that that's it? a great way of doing it. Well, <laughs> maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was. We just made something up then. Maybe next time I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Then we'll have you back again. Okay. And if you miss any of D. Paul's tips, that's digital Paul. Be sure to click by our website, techtv.com slash C-A-L-L-F-O-R-H-E-L-P forward slash I-N-D-E-X dot H-T-M-L question mark. What I want for Christmas is a shorter URL. <laughs>